We have a saying around here. Oh yeah? Yeah, no brains, no headache. <laughs> <laughs> well, hello, boys. What's up? Son, where'd you find this? Episode 166 of No Brains, No Headache Podcast starts right now. Damn glad to be here. Happy to meet you. My name is Jordan Weichel. I'll be your host today. Uh, as always, I'm joined across the table from my co-host, confident, longtime friend. We call him Matt Ongo Cleary. Matt, how are you doing today? Been a little bit hungover today, if I'm being honest. You're getting back to your roots. Start, yep. Started drinking more. Yeah. I never since I said that. It's just been a long three days. But we've got a special episode here because we're also joined in studio. We have another guest here with us on site. Made his way all the way to Bismarck. Uh, we got our interview here with David Standle, comedian based in Fargo, North Dakota. Also was the third act in Comedy Night 4. Uh, so we're we're homies. We go way back to about six weeks ago. Dave, how are you doing, buddy? Good, good, good to be here. Uh, Matt, little tip for you: you can't be hungover if you don't stop drinking. I mean, that's kind of where I'm getting to right now. Mm -hmm. So I, mean, I don't know if you noticed, but we showed up and he was sound asleep. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> it was a rough day. <laughs> I told you before we walked in. Yeah, like, you said he's probably gonna be laying on the couch. Okay, I was a little off. I was in my bed, which <laughs> is <laughs> actually worse now that I'm saying it out loud. You got your rum ham shirt on. Dude, I so. love this fucking shirt. That's a nice shirt, rum yeah. ham. Did you just order a bunch of shirts recently? I could talk about what I... I got a $400 gift card to Amazon, and I bought nothing that is remotely useful. Who gave you a $400 gift card to Amazon? What uh, monster gives you a $400 gift card to Amazon? My work. To, that's a monster. That, I mean, to, that makes sense. Yeah. To, to get out of giving me a raise. Yeah, I'm about to say, that's like, that's totally a, like, <laughs> like, like, get out of giving you a raise move. Like, it's like, hey, we really appreciate you. Here's a gift card for $400 to Amazon. Like, I, could you give me $400? Like, nah, dude, that's, that's too nice of us, dude. We can't do that. It wasn't even a gift card. It was literally a piece of paper that had a code on it. Oh, my God. And it's like... <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> and you know they got that out of some like crazy deal out of Amazon already, you know? Oh, so it's yeah. like not like they actually paid for it. Yeah. <laughs> Buy in bulk and then you can avoid giving your employees actual raises. Yeah, it's like we'll give you so many so much credit. Dude, there was like one time like five years ago, I they gave me these gift cards and I was like, sweet. And all of them were expired. I'm like, they definitely found these in some guy's desk and they were like Good enough. Give them to the office. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's not many perks of being Matt's friend. You know, pretty much you're just going to hate yourself as much as he hates himself, which is his go-to. But the one thing, Dave, is that he has gift cards galore. One day I went and visited him, and he's like, oh, $15 spinards. I was like, I'll take that and just hand it over. <laughs> he's really, he's I to a kingdom. I don't believe in gift cards very much unless they're Amazon and I can just blow it on whatever I want. Mm-hmm. Also, when Matt gets a ton of cash on him, he feels the need that he has to spend it. Otherwise, the government's going to find out about it. Well, yep. dude, my mom and sister are very bad at giving gifts. So <laughs> by that, you mean they I, don't? I thought this was going to be like my mom and sister committed tax fraud last no, year. No, I mean, they might as well have because they're fucking with me. Like they're like they uh, every year they give me Marcus Theater gift cards, which is like the theaters in Fargo, you know. But like I don't watch movies. Like I don't go to the theater. I've gone to the theater maybe three times in the last five years so like i have like a hundred and fifty dollars worth of <laughs> Marcus gift cards could you just go there and like buy popcorn or well something? like like the thing is like i i find it like this girl that i have uh i was talking to she's she was like do you want to go to a movie i literally have a hundred and fifty dollars <laughs> worth of <this laughs> Marcus their gift cards she's like yeah so um i was like what movie do you want to go it's like right, you, you can either go to barbie because i was like i heard that's pretty good i'd go see barbie or the out. meg too because that's pretty i mean like come on like i want to see the meg too you Unpopular know. opinion. I liked the first one. You know, it's like people people have these weird conceptions of movies. They're like, oh, I need it to be good all through. You know, it's like, it's like, it's like, dude, like the Transformers movie. People hate on the Transformers movie. It's like, dude, I came to that movie to see some giant robots <laughs> take the <laughs> shit out of other giant robots. Like, That's I don't care get. about the story, dude. Fuck Shia LaBeouf. I don't give a fuck about Shia LaBeouf, dude. <laughs> he can go fuck himself for that movie. I want to see Optimus Prime, dude. Like, yeah. you know, so it's like the Meg. Like, I don't give a shit about a storyline. I want to see giant yeah. sharks eating fat kids on rafts, dude. <laughs> That's all I want to see. Like, I don't give a fuck about. Like fucking dialogue, fuck that <laughs> shit. 
Fuck words. Let me see the sharks, dude. Make it a highlight reel of sharks just mowing people down. Oh, dude, Sharknado. That's what we watched last night. Oh, I've seen all five. Oh, there's five of them? <laughs> yeah. There's five Sharknados? I know there was the one and maybe it another gets, two. It, it, the first one you think is, like, ridiculous and that it just gets progressively, just gets dumber like, and dumber. at one point he, like, jumps into a shark using with a chainsaw no that's the first one that's the first one yeah the first but there's one. one where he has like a legit lightsaber oh, and it's oh called my like, god <laughs> the last one is called like sharknado fuck no or something oh, like god. it's it's rid- i'll look it up but it's just dude, they, bananas. they're out of control yeah, dude yeah. like and the thing is like they're because it was the 10 year anniversary so they were like uh they did like a, a reel at the end of the movie that they were like stay tuned for after the credits for like a special like thing and they're talking about like the making and i was like dude you guys should shut the fuck you guys are so lucky that you made a shit film and it blew up as much as it did it's so bad it's, it's like dude, it's like seven pro- of them. it's like classic producers musical like it's easier to make money off a flop than it is a hit or six. You know, and then they just made tons of money off of a flop. Uh, it essentially kept Tara Reed from being homeless. Oh yeah, her acting <laughs> is so, dude. In the first Sharknado, everyone's acting is so bad except for one guy. Like one, like Tara Reed's like husband or boyfriend yeah. is like actually the best actor in the film. They kill him off in like three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, like out, out of all that acting, the one guy that's like competent actor. I'm like, oh dude, this guy's actually good at acting. Then it's probably because they dead. couldn't afford him for the whole. Yeah, thing. they're Play like, yeah, I, like I you watched- get me for. 20 minutes i watched the show big sky and like the big draw on it was ryan philippi mm-hmm. was the main actor in it and like he did all the promo for it and he gets his head blown off in the first episode oh god <laughs> ruin it a little more i i uh, who is ryan Phil- philippi he uh was in the show shooter he was in the oc i think back in the day mm-hmm. the oc huh oh yes. there he is there he is you guys know that show? You guys obviously know Breaking Bad, like yeah. those shows. You know the guy that plays, um, like the guy in the wheelchair. You know Hector Salamanca. Oh, yeah. You know, so that guy, um, he also played a character in Oz back in the '90s. He plays like an Italian mob boss, and um, I looked him up. He's not Italian or Hispanic. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's pretty he's, tan. <laughs> he's Yiddish. He's Jewish, dude. The dude's a Jew, dude. <laughs> he's not, not Mexican or Italian at all. Dude is the most versatile actor in the space of the earth, dude. He can play a black guy next month if he wasn't dead. Dude. <laughs> uh, I just thought of Tropic Thunder when. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 2010, Robert Downey Jr. did blackface yeah. for an entire movie. Yeah, and no one cares because it was a pretty funny movie. Yeah, everyone's like, "All right, Robbie, you got this one. <laughs> we'll give you this one. The last, last good comedy of life." So, okay, let's party. I love it. This is off yeah. to a hot start. <laughs> oh, I got a Sharknado going through them. The second coming. Feeding Frenzy. Oh, hell no. The fourth awakens. I think one of them's an offshoot. So there's six in a row and then one just like some random other movie also called Sharknado. I don't the, know. The rights died after the fifth one. So it's, it's like, it's like, it's like <laughs> I knew we can make a Sharknado yeah. now. <laughs> some guy got the trademark and he just lives in his basement. Oh, uh, dude. there was one that, that like the third one or something where it's just kind of like it plopped in there. That's like the Tokyo drift of, okay. That's what I'm thinking. Yep. Yeah. Sharknado and fast and the furious are pretty similar films. They're getting to be there. Shark families. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> you don't turn on family. Right? I like, I like in the Sharknado, like there's one point where she's like, that's a tiger shark. And it's like, Good job. <laughs> <laughs> there is like four. There, there, there's four types of sharks. Yeah, they're 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 everywhere. Good job yeah. figuring out which one was which. Like it, they didn't even like mention it. Like it's specific. Like oh, it will do this now because it's a tiger shark. It's like that's a tiger shark. That's a hammerhead. Good yeah. job, <laughs> dude. I, there was this girl whose eyes were really far apart, and someone called her a hammerhead oh. shark. <laughs> <laughs> And I was trying not to laugh because it was to her face, but I was just like, fuck. Hammerhead or flounder? <laughs> <laughs> Although I suppose the flounder's both on one side of the head. Yeah. As if like, <laughs> her eyes are on the two close together on one side. <laughs> She's a flounder. <laughs> I think if she was a flounder, she'd that would be probably the least amount of her problems. <laughs> be more productive than she is now. Can't drive. Yeah. <laughs> 
Because <laughs> she's a woman. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you had me on here for a reason. <laughs> what are your thoughts on Bismarck? Came to Bismarck again. Dude, Bismarck, I am learning, is way cooler than I would have ever thought. Like, like I, I was... I, I never come here because everyone in Fargo is like, oh, why would you ever go anywhere other than Fargo in North Dakota? You already live here. But you guys have giant skeletons at your heritage center. Yeah. Like giant sea turtle skeletons and shit. Like that's dope. You guys got, you work at a fucking rum distillery. That's fucking dope. Yeah. You know, like your zoo. You guys got tigers. <laughs> you guys got fucking tigers and shit at your zoo. We don't got shit. We got camp. We got smelly fucking camels. Dude. Like we got we a got raccoon shit. that just got in there. Yeah, and we can't get him out. Yeah, we just part of the exhibit now. It's like, <laughs> uh, the greatest text I got is Dave goes at four oh one. He texted me going to the zoo, and at four oh eight, he texted me fucking zoos closed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah dude i was mad brewing the zoo for, like you're close oh, that's tonight yeah, yeah that's tonight yeah. they're like they're like yeah but we're close from like 3 30 to 6 to get prepare like what do you mean prepare let me go look at the animals while you're getting the beer ready what the fuck are you talking about i'll pay you money to let me go let me go fucking hang with the tigers bro this is, i came all the way here yeah, and then I broke the news to, come to news to him because he was like, "Hey, we should try to go there afterwards." I was like, "No, this is like a ticketed thing. I'm pretty sure you gotta like yeah. pay a fee." And he's like, "For thirty bucks, I'm getting in the monkey cages." <laughs> yeah, for thirty bucks, I'm getting in with the gorillas, dude. Like, <laughs> fuck that. You just have shit in your hand, ready to go in the cage. <laughs> go toe to go toe to toe with a fucking orangutan, dude. <laughs> Where's Dave at? He's getting the shit kicked out of him by a huge monkey. Dude, I could it. probably take a red panda or something. That's probably like my fight, you know, with the Red River Zoo in Fargo. I could probably fight the red panda. My brother, when he lived in Washington, D.C., they had a, I think it was like a red panda. They looked like little foxes. Mm -hmm. And they just didn't build the cage properly. And the thing would just escape like every, every day. <laughs> red panda on the loose. And they would literally tweet out. They'd be like, red panda, if you're in this neighborhood and see it, please dial this number. It would happen like every two days and be like, well, red panda's out again. Yeah, that's that's how you know the Red River Zoo is shit when they're like that's their main attraction is a little fucking fox teddy bear looking thing. It they, it's probably is just a fox and they call it a red panda. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's, it's not a panda at all. <laughs> like, I don't even know where it even comes from. That's a dog. Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, that's some decent PR though if they're just trying to get awareness of the zoo out, then people will be like, "Oh, I care about this. I'm going to retweet that or whatever." And then it's like, whoa, this is free advertising for the zoo yeah, because their animals the whole, are getting out. The only advertising is like, hey, man, you might be able to take one of these things home. <laughs> <laughs> like, it might just get out and you can just take it with you. It, it, it's, he's at Dave's house now. It's just, <laughs> he's hanging out in the back. Taking a tweet with, like, the red panda, just, like, <laughs> <laughs> selfie with it at the pool. It's like, nah, he's, he's cool. He's chilling. We're drinking natties. <laughs> Bismarck's not too bad. What did you think of, so you were here for Comedy Night 4, uh, which was when the hell was that in June? June, mid June, let's say. June, uh, you're here June, with June Blaze. 8th. So it was Blaze started out, then Matt went, then Dave went, then myself was the lineup for the night. That was our first time at the venue too. What'd you think of that? Place? I love that place. That whole place was cool, dude. I like, yeah. obviously got that video like of like the whole back like walk up area. <laughs> Matt's the worst cameraman. Dude, ever. you were <laughs> fucking running up dude, the stairs. Dude, I didn't know. Like he said the name, I was like, okay, I don't really. He like he took he hammed the intro way too long, so I was like, I could have walked way slower. And he, he told he told people I was from like California. I was like, dude, like he's like he's been like the san francisco he's been to mumbai I'm like what the fuck are you talking about dude <laughs> i said new orleans how did you get any of that <laughs> yeah right i was like what the hell are you talking about <laughs> he's like he's been to abu dhabi <laughs> like what i wish <laughs> former ufc fighter <laughs> <laughs> middleweight champion i'm a lightweight dude <laughs> i'm featherweight at least yeah you just tell matt to uh, thank you. you you tell matt to that you're gonna like say a line and then Matt immediately just forgets about that and cuts you <laughs> off. And you're like, "What was the punchline?" Oh, it, th that was just gonna say it's like, but and then I said, "That's not a monkey. That's my wife." <laughs> <laughs> my uh, my aunt. She's like, "I saw the video. I don't know what you're trying to what you're saying there, but it seemed like it was supposed to be funny." I was like, "Oh, I said that's not a monkey. That's my wife." And she's like, "Oh, <laughs> that's not. <laughs> Never <laughs> mind." <laughs> yeah, she's like, "Oh, can you say you're a comic?" <laughs> I, I like I like the girl you hang out with, David. 
<laughs> oh, he's just a monkey. <laughs> No, so, that was sweet, though. I mean, what was your, like, first impressions when you're like, oh, show in Bismarck? I mean, I've been to Bismarck. I've been to Bismarck Mandan before. It's usually, like, it's chill. It's usually not a big stage like that. It's usually, yeah. like, a bar show or something, like, stage stop or something like that. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so I had a lot of fun. I was very wowed by the whole setup. Yeah, honestly, I didn't really know what to expect even that much because I've been in there a bunch, but I hadn't been, like, downstairs or mm-hmm. I didn't really f- to be honest, I haven't really done much comedy, so yeah. What do they even do? They use do like plays there and stuff. I'm assuming. Yeah, Children's so it's plays. Uh, Dakota Stage Theater and it's Shade Tree. Yeah, is the production company. That's funny. They have children's theater and then comedy. Well, it's also <laughs> like everybody can do it because I just saw they had uh, auditions for I think their fall play, like mm. their horror film play, since for Halloween yeah, yeah, time. They're, they're doing Sweeney Todd. I'm sure it's going to get yeah, raved. and people are everybody is getting their callbacks for auditions so everybody's oh, okay. pretty jazzed yeah, callback is only four people audition <laughs> you play six roles <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> i yeah i i have no idea they like they had the only comic i've heard that like went there is when screech the guy that played screech got oh like, yeah you're telling me about yeah that. got like addicted to heroin and he was just taking like any job he could and they're like we'll give you 25 bucks if you come to bismarck <laughs> and he's like I'm in, and then he like, died two weeks later. Yeah, I definitely wasn't saved by the bell, man. <laughs> <laughs> you think he by heroin. the basement wall? <laughs> Did we find his autograph in the basement wall? Screech? Probably is so high. Dustin, Diamond. That's, yeah, name, Dustin right? Diamond. Dustin Diamond. That's his name, right? Dustin Diamond. Yeah, dude. At yeah. A, who would do drugs in the back part of the, Who would ever in the green do drugs room? in the... Dave, did you smoke in the bathroom? No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> just, I, nothing was... Just no. Yes. <laughs> like, no convincing or anything. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like I got a glimpse of what it might be to be like a parent of a teenager. Because like you just kind of came back with your head down and just like couldn't look me in the eye. And it's like, of all people here, I care the least. <laughs> yeah, I was like, they wouldn't let me go outside. <laughs> it was <laughs> fucking locked. Yeah, in, in, in your defense, the door was locked. And, <laughs> and then if you went out the front door, you would have went ran into wheelchair guy, which is just who had a liability. huge swastika on his hand. Oh, dude, that's that's my crowd for sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he, he he follows me state to state. I mean, I had I had one joke where I said Jews, and I just heard woo. woo! <laughs> so he, I said they're good. <laughs> oh, oh, oh! No. <laughs> Didn't that dude roll out like right away? Yeah, I was think he out there when you were there? I like went up there to like check on just to see how things were going up there, and he like rolled in, and I saw him like pay for a ticket, and I was like, I mean, I don't want to discriminate, but we'll take your money, but I can't imagine you're a good human being. <laughs> well, uh, I remember like when I, I was in the green room, and you're like, there's a, uh, I was like, what's the crowd like? There's there's two audience members, and they're two black children. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, Blaze was still getting set up, and like my big thing about doing comedy is just like I want it to be a whole production. So it's like I don't want the crowd to see us like dinking around on the stage, still getting ready. It's like get back there, and so I went out and helped Blaze real quick, and then he he was like, "Yeah, there's a couple people in the crowd." Didn't specify at all that they were <laughs> kids. I was like, "You could have just told me that." And then I like asked the tickets, like what the deal was, because it's just two unattended children at our comedy show, and I was like. We I can't avoid children at my comedy shows. I mean, the open mic's been decent lately, but there was a streak there. I'm batting like about 500 with children under the age of like 10 being at my comedy shows. And, and not just <laughs> at, like everyone that comes into open mics, I don't know if it's the same way in Fargo, but like everyone that comes in like, sweet, open mic, and then they go sit as far away from where someone's well, their venue's yeah. a little different yeah but the it place depends on where you're at but yeah, yeah. I, I know exactly what you're talking about and then of course the one table that's closest is full of five small children and like their mom or um in fargo what happens is the closest table is just a group of five people that have been drinking since 4 p.m <laughs> and you're like they, they don't even know where they are anymore <laughs> yeah you're like we're doing comedy like what <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you're you in a comedy down? club. What are you? <laughs> yeah, they're just hanging out in the cellar like before <laughs> anybody's down there. How do these assholes get down here? Oh, yeah, I love when I'm like doing stuff down there, like getting ready. I'm like, Randall's come down there. I'm like, yeah, you can't be down here yet. And like, what do you mean? I'm like, I mean, get the fuck there's out. Not like, there's, <laughs> yeah. not, there's not like what a lot mean? of reason you can't be down here, but you just can't. So 
leave. <laughs> <laughs> One of us has to come, leave. Come back. Come back in two minutes. I think. Doesn't it say like right on the door? Like opens at eight. Yeah. 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 People don't know how to read in Fargo. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's a lost skill for sure. I don't know if people can read here. I mean, but it's TDD. The other day, Matt was having a hard time with both talking and reading. He just couldn't do either. Oh yeah, I, I he was having doozy. I get stuck on words like I can't say pecu peculiar, peculiar. I can't peculiar. say peculiar. peculiar, 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 peculiar. Nice. Yeah, I know. How you, I know how you feel, dude. <laughs> I'd be like that sometimes. But you had a show like after the Bismarck show, like the week later, and I think I messaged Blaze and I was like, "How'd it go?" He's like, "No one was paying attention." And then I just see a picture that you hit a deer. Or oh something. yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, "Oh, it sounds like a fucking terrible show." Yeah, it, it was. Um, well, for Blaze, they weren't really paying attention to Blaze, but <laughs> <laughs> when I got up there, they were they they were paying attention at least a little bit more. Uh, but so it was a decent show, I thought. But yeah, we were driving home and literally like home stretch like 45 hour back to fargo fucking wrap my my suv around a deer like it it yeah totaled the car and then i call my uncle because he lives in dl we're in frazy you know so yeah. not very far away and um i call my uncle and i was like hey can you come pick us up we hit a deer and my uncle goes oh yeah dude any other time I would have come, but <laughs> I, I've been, I just got home and I've been drinking, so I probably shouldn't leave the house again. I'm like, oh yeah, whatever, man. Totally cool. I totally understand. Chuck. Yeah, yeah whatever. You know? <laughs> and, um, and then, uh, this, this couple pulls over and helps us out. And apparently they know him because like my uncle and they were her went to school. With <laughs> they went to school together. <laughs> and, um, and then, uh, she's like, oh yeah, I know your uncle. Like, yeah, I can drop you off at his house. And so then I call my uncle again. I'm like, Hey, is it okay if these people that, you know, like drop us off at, uh, your house and he goes who is this <laughs> <laughs> and i'm like it's your nephew david you know the one you love so much uh, <laughs> i have a nephew <laughs> and he's, like, he's like oh 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 yeah yeah like so that first part you said you were just shooting the shit that first time i called here like any other time bro <laughs> any other time i would have came and picked you up but you didn't even know who the fuck you were talking to <laughs> <laughs> i was like all right well can i can i he's like oh yeah that's fine so she drops me off at this house or whatever but <laughs> yeah dude like everyone's like what happened to the deer i'm like dude that thing is in space <laughs> Like it's orbiting the Earth right now. <laughs> Which half of the deer? <laughs> <laughs> like, like I, I assume that that Earth actually does have like a ring like Saturn, but it's just orbiting dead deer <laughs> and roadkill <laughs> orbiting the Earth. <laughs> Dude, that that's insane. Did I, you have a lot of damage? I totaled the car. I have a new car now. Was everybody all right? Yes, everyone was okay. Everyone's all right. Luckily, played. Subarus have a great safety rating. So for lesbians. And me. And me also. <laughs> no, like a lesbian. <laughs> the lesbians plus Matt and Dave. <laughs> yeah. You know, all the main food groups. They're, they're our most precious resource. We have to keep them safe. <laughs> lesbians or Subarus? Re lesbians, man. Oh, okay. <laughs> they're one and the same. They go hand in hand. I love that video where the lady's like, I drive a Subaru because I'm gay. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. You know why, though? It's because um, Subaru... Um, Back in the day, used to donate a lot of money to like the, I, I don't know what the word is. I'm just gonna say gay uprising. <laughs> yeah. Back when it was just the LG yeah. community, lesbian, gay, <laughs> <laughs> LG, life's good. Life's good. That's back when life was good. Dude. It was just the two, the two, the two queers. <laughs> yeah. You could see like like who listens to the podcast, and it's like, oh, we're like. 30% female, 78% or 69, 68% 68 male. And then it's like 2% non-binary. And it's like, how do you even put that? <laughs> <laughs> Who like is if, this? <laughs> like if I wanted to change it's that just, in it's my just settings, like, I wouldn't know how to do it on my computer. It's just like one really asexual guy that's just been chemically castrated. Like, <laughs> like blonde hair just like no hormones pumping through his body he's like i love these guys <laughs> i'm dead inside i can't yeah. get an erection and i love these guys <laughs> i'll never fuck again these guys are great <laughs> like i said matt was trying to bang his fucking microwave the other day so oh yeah 
How'd that go? He's been really big into appliances lately. Dude, I have been on the Cuisinart. Cuisinart kink. <laughs> Dude, I, I was literally about to fuck my dishwasher last <laughs> night. It would not turn on. So that's like your that's your like coping mechanism. You're like, if something won't do what you want to do, you fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, you're like, well, sir, I can't let you into this movie. It's sold out. I was like, get ready, bitch. <laughs> I got $150 worth of gift cards. <laughs> do you know Dave? He is, lives in Fargo, and I know this isn't related at all, but he has a lot of movie gift cards. Like, oh, yeah. I know oh, yeah, dude. Yeah, 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 Dave is standing <laughs> yeah. yeah, He's very popular in the theater community. Isn't it a different Has the highest of stock of anyone. <laughs> <laughs> the, in the theater community. His family single-handedly keeping the theater open just yeah. by purchasing gift cards that Dave never uses. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a little trickle-down effect, right? Everybody gets their piece of the See, pie. Every time I get one, I'm like, oh, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> just put it in the pile. <laughs> just like, all right. <laughs> I'm like, like, I, was like, I was like, I'll buy the large, the biggest combo you got because I am flush. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. don't, I don't have a right lot now. of actual money. <laughs> yeah, but what but I do have. I can afford a large popcorn. That's yeah. for sure. That's pretty badass. And the large drink where you can get free refills. Well, you, if you get the large drink and the large popcorn, you can get a free refill on. Well, I mean, technically you get a re free refill on any drink. You know, what is going to stop you? I'm from going so back to the fountain. <laughs> oh, like this was like three or four years ago. Me and my brother went to a movie and it was, I think we went to like zombie land two nice. mm -hmm. and we walk in and this freaking nerdy teenager who's working in the front just goes, Oh, can I see your ID? Cause it was a rated R. So I like give him my ID and then Sean doesn't have his. And it's like, can I see your ID? And Sean just goes, Oh, I'm 30. So <laughs> and he's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh god, <laughs> yeah. It's uh, sometimes. I mean, I got a. You can't really see because I shaved my beard, but I have a, a lot of gray in my beard. So when I get people like cast your ID, I'm like, dude, you don't need it. Like, let's not play this game. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to feel younger, and because I know I'm not. So just, just let me in. He's actually younger than us. I know. I. It's like Dave's either 23 or 62. <laughs> There's no in between. <laughs> I'm 28. How old are you, Matt? 29 Shh, fucking old record. fuck dude what the yeah. fuck's wrong with you dude, it's coming you're both 28 you're both 29 yeah, right? our birthdays are five days apart so yeah. nice but born in different years oh yeah, yeah i suppose i get how that goes yeah Again. yeah no nope. yeah i'm uh i'm glad i'm not uh i'm not 30 yet at least i can i i have a countdown i uh i say uh if i don't do stand up full time by 30 i'm gonna kill myself i was just gonna say or a yeah. bunch of people in the theater uh so at the movie theater with your gift card yeah. <laughs> no, he i'm was, gonna he was, finish this he was staged in the place no he just had a bunch of gift cards he needed to use. <laughs> Kept buying people popcorn and then <laughs> popping their corn yeah yep yeah. while matt's in and the back the fucking the theater <laughs> yeah matt's fucking his theater chair <laughs> Jordan's getting stoned in the corner, and Dave's putting on a show. I don't think I've gone. I've only probably been to, like, three or four movies in the last five years, but I don't think I've gone and not went and picked up shooters, and you just get one pop and then just dump, like, six ounces of booze in it. Yeah. Well, dude, last night in uh, Sharknado, it was just me and this other girl in the theater, so... You went to Sharknado in a theater? Yeah. It was the, it was the uh, 10th anniversary uh, screening. Jesus. Yeah. So it was... It's basically a showing of a Sharknado and a Gamma Dig Dug. <laughs> did you go after open mic? Yeah, I did. Nice, very nice. How was your set? Uh, it was it was it was interesting. There's a big crowd, so it was nice. So I just kind of did some hits, and then like uh, I <laughs> let's just run with the hits tonight. Right? <laughs> yeah, basically that's what you call them. Just call them the hits, <laughs> deep tracks only. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, Mark Way, like I was going a little over, which is fine because it's me i don't get you know, like yeah, I don't, unless you're jordan yeah, goes, yeah. immediately so, goes bah, bah, bah. <laughs> so you kept flashing the lights so I, like i finally I, like took the mic I was, like, I was like i fucking see the light i'm not fucking retarded <laughs> i fucking know you're making everyone uncomfortable because now i'm yelling at you you're doing this to everyone and then yeah so uh yeah i, I just just play with it just make a big scene but yeah you really have to be an idiot to miss the lights who would do that <laughs> i was just like watching the countdown because i have a little timer going mm -hmm. yeah the easiest way to figure out what time you have I blacked, uh, out. <laughs> Bla blacked out I blacked out on stage yeah you got he uh it happens you know you get on that solar stage and you're just like it's just google blank and then all of a sudden you've done 30 minutes <laughs> <laughs> 
You're, I mean, it's you like, only had 10, they did 30, so <laughs> it's like half the place is gone. <laughs> Damn it, dude. There, there was times like when we do an open mic, and I think someone went for like literally 22 minutes. Oh, that man. was my bad. I was hosting that one, I should have cut him off, but we have pretty loose laws around here. Well, yeah, so when you don't have like a big mic, it's yeah. easier because to be there's about eight of us that do comedy. Seriously, in business. Yeah, it's like, kind of like do whatever, it, yeah, until, until like it's tiring, then fucking yeah. get off stage, you know. They're like, how long can I go? It's like, if you could do 10, that would be awesome. And they're like, I have two and a half. It's like, well, son of a bitch, figure it out. <laughs> like we, cause I have two and a half and they do 30. You're like, I was just up there. I don't know. I just felt it. So. I mean, you know, there's there's people in the Bismarck market that I just don't care for their comedy very much. And when and I that's tell Fargo too. <laughs> well, when I, when I tell you as host, I'm cool about it and say, hey, do one more joke. And then they rattle off three more jokes, and I have to pretty much just, like, walk up there because, mm -hmm. like, you saw the venue that we did it. That was at the Tiki Bar. Uh, we don't have a fucking timer. We, I, It's so light in there. I don't, that, the, the basement concept mm -hmm. of the cellar I really like. But, yeah, the flashlight wouldn't work, so I was like, I just, can we just stop? Like, why do we have to go for 25 minutes? You're making all of us uncomfortable. Yeah. It, and it's it's never the people that are killing that are doing twenty minutes. It's always the people that like are just saying nothing and making everyone super uncomfortable that are going for just way too long. You know, oh, and so. then once you hear someone like go enough, you're like, oh, if they fucking open up with this joke and it just doesn't land, be like Jordan, bet you five bucks that this happens. It happens, and then something else happens. I'm like, we're even. Mm -hmm. it's just, I mean, I'm all for people like doing it giving it a try but like yeah maybe a little bit of planning yeah that's why we give new people three minutes yeah. at the cellar because like unless and, you're and, me then you get then five you get, then you get seven and a half minutes. yeah <laughs> then you get 14 minutes yeah and everyone just left afterwards <laughs> I, I went right before the guy that took his shoes off and immediately before his set went and smoked weed outside Oh, and dude, you're talking about party, dude. <laughs> he was wearing, like, a top hat. Yep, party, dude. <laughs> yep, yep, party, dude. Uh, like, that guy, there's no way he's not. Oh, homeless. dude, he's he's off the rails these days. He, uh, he had a tragedy in the household. So oh, boy. He's uh he's going off. Like, my friend, uh, you know, obviously, Blaze. You guys yeah. know Blaze. He was wearing a shirt that said, uh, it, well, no, it didn't say anything. It just had Abraham Lincoln with Wolverine claws. And in Fargo, like, a cop just got shot. And Eric, uh, party dude, goes up to him and was like, it's like, dude, you're really going to wear that shirt after what just happened? He's like, what? How, what are you talking about? Like, those two things he's, like, he's like, a cop just got shot, and you're going to wear that shirt? He's like, what? <laughs> it's like, Lincoln got shot in the head. And you're like, dude, what are you talking so about? you made that connection? <laughs> yeah, like, like just craziness. You're like, okay, man, well, I guess I'm going to go be away from you. Yeah, that's just <laughs> like when you're asking for, like, some sort of like response from someone mm. it's like you're gonna really gonna wear a rum ham shirt <laughs> isn't that called gas lincoln was shot in the head and you're gonna wear a rum, rum ham, ham shirt, shirt dude yeah. the fuck are you you're dude, so dude he went crazy because he got attacked by wolverine and you're gonna wear that shit right now <laughs> it's like what are you talking about like and then like um this one guy came up out of he's like new to the scene or like he's in town for a couple weeks and he did a set which i thought was pretty good you know for someone i've never seen before and he goes up to him he's like dude you really gotta look up what's going on in the town you're doing stand-up and he's like what are you talking about i was like it's like there's 15 year olds raping 10 year olds in the park and we're like what the fuck are you talking <laughs> about dude like jesus christ like we're like okay eric we're done we're done dude like we're, this is done <laughs> like like the, the abraham lincoln thing that was one thing now we're just going. fucking <laughs> newspaper do you read yeah, yeah like what <laughs> what are you talking about dude that's the biggest escalation of anything I've one seen thing this led to another that's party dude that you're talking that's part, about? yeah party dude just yeah. off the rails yeah and apparently Matt had to follow does uh, hat tricks like yeah he'll like do hat tricks and like all it is is like he has a top hat that he has like a ribbon tied around and he'll just like swing it around his arm and catch it in his arm and he just goes like and everyone's just like yeah. yeah like it, they think they're like watching a straight up autistic guy like you're like am i supposed, like, am I supposed to pat this guy on the back who is freshly stoned yeah, yeah. it was like, like you could just hear him go out the back door and it I'd, slams and it comes back in and just a waft <laughs> yeah. oh, that, essentially that's what it was because he like came and like because i think i went and took a picture of you going and he came he was sitting right by me and then he went out and came back in like i don't know like two minutes later and just reeked like mm -hmm. Not good weed. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, he, he smoked some. He smoked some pretty interesting stuff. He had he had a for when it was his Bath birthday. Salts. <laughs> when he had when he had his birthday, he like someone gave him a gift of some like perps in like a bag, and he's like, "Do you want to smoke some?" And like, I'm like, "Yeah, I do." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And so we go out there and smoke. I was like, "This is actually pretty good stuff for what I'm used to you having, dude." Actually, I never smoked your stuff because I don't trust it. But it just I saw this came in a bag, so I was yeah, like, <laughs> a sealed up, bag, straight up fentanyl. Yeah, like this thing came in like a prepackaged bag. So this is just horse tranquilizers. <laughs> and it's, and hey, it's his you, birthday. You probably did trap him in a K hole before the mic, man. You trying to take my spot? What are you trying to do? Right I was now? open mic. Ever a lot of people died. <laughs> <laughs> Lost a lot of good men out there. Oh, dude! Oh, they, did they bomb? No, they they died. Yeah, they got they got they shot up some bad fentanyl, dude. <laughs> Everyone at the mic, dude, like that They're lady, that lady on the plane who was like, "That person is not fucking real." Oh, that the craziest thing that's a so reptilian hot. or whatever. Yeah. The, oh, yeah. So hot, dude. It's like, the I'd hot be like yeah. But okay. I'll be a reptilian if you want me to, lady. Like, yeah. <laughs> Look up <laughs> Tiffany Gomez or. So hot. I usually Gomez just scroll by the Gomez? shit. I, it's G O M A S. Oh, you're, you're the cultured one. I was say like so if it was G O M E E Z and it was Gomez, you said Gomez. I was like, that's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> Gomez, you mean Doesn't Gomez? Gomez. <laughs> Gomez. <laughs> I'm very white. <laughs> <laughs> no. no, the kid in the rum ham shirt. Uh, but yeah, that was fun out in Fargo. We. We drew a decent uh, crowd that night, Matt and I. So I don't feel too bad about going over. Oh, yeah, because you guys brought some people too. Didn't yeah. You? yeah, yeah, we brought. Uh, there's probably six or seven. Like, yeah, extras. probably nice. good. And then, uh, yeah, I like the Fargo one. At least that was probably about a year ago now. Actually, yeah. Uh, but I like somebody did slam poetry. Uh, there's the old guy in all denim who's just kind of like reading whatever. Oh yeah, Simon. Like, that's Simon says. Yeah, Simon says. Yeah. Uh, He's There's legend. just so many like characters, whereas like here it's just like mm-hmm. it's like eight white dudes, just yeah, who are idiots. Yeah, you guys gotta move to the far- to the cities or Fargo or something if you want to keep doing this stuff. You have a lot more fun. I don't know. I just like supplementing it as part of my overall career of podcasting and doing comedy. And I did an MC gig, so that was pretty fun. I enjoyed nice. MCing. I actually got paid pretty decently. Was not expecting that. So, where'd you MC? Um, it was a parking lot party over McQuaid's weekend. So our buddy McQuaid's, yeah, McQuaid like softball McQuaid's tournament, like McQuaid's, McQuaid's softball tournament charity. <laughs> it's essentially a bunch of dudes doing Quaaludes. It's softball for charity. Yeah. <laughs> Dad, that's like my sport idea that you give every person on a basketball team a drug that they don't know what it is a half hour before the game, and then they just go play. Mm-hmm. Like, that guy's definitely on acid. <laughs> To give them all bath salts, they're all just rubbing each other's faces off. Yeah, some guy ate a basketball. <laughs> <laughs> Bit like an apple, dude. It was <laughs> creepy. <laughs> you can tighten that up. So, it... um, so you work at a pawn shop, and I did see a video that you you posted that someone was literally trying to sell their kitchen sink. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's that's average day for sure, dude. So you just work at like the, a greasy pawn shop. Oh, every pawn shop's greasy, dude. Yeah, like true. About? Every pawn shop's greasy. So <laughs> I was in this pawn shop in Mandan, and uh, this guy comes in with one of those hot dog rollers from a gas station mm. that was clearly just stolen from a gas station, like used ten minutes ago. It was yeah. still cooling down. Still got hot dog grease on it. <laughs> <laughs> still had a hot dog. On it. <laughs> I was like, oh, like I, why the fuck am I in here? Yeah, dude, that's that's pawn shop living for you for sure. Yeah, and that guy was mad that they wouldn't take it either. And know what's actually funny about that is that he went to our other location and they told him to come to our location. <laughs> so I was like, ah, oh, those fuckers. <laughs> Send them back. Yeah, and we, be like, hey, they just called me. Oh, they yeah. said, you got to go back there. They'll definitely take it. <laughs> yeah, they would do that to each other all the time. Yeah. Like People will bring in something insane. We're like, oh, yeah, our, uh, our 45th location will definitely take that. <laughs> it's like storage wars, but pawn shop wars. are just sending crackheads back and forth mm-hmm. all day. I heard like some staggering like statistic that like 10 percent of things that are pawned are stolen that's a that's a um conservative number <laughs> <laughs> i would say maybe like 70 <laughs> percent. <laughs> yeah 
ten percent are not stolen, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I would say thirty percent of. Do, do they just legit. have a police officer there just every <laughs> no, day, like clocks care, in for please you? Don't fucking care, dude. Uh, it used to be like police used to send us out a list of people that were like wanted for like theft and burglary and stuff. They don't do that anymore. They're just like, do they really not? Is no. it not regulated at all? I mean, like the cops don't in Fargo don't investigate unless your theft is over like a thousand dollars. And oh. even at that, they don't give a, a hot shit. dog it's roller. A, it's, a, it's a lot of kitchen sinks. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, so it's like if if your stuff gets stolen in Fargo, you're fucked, dude. <laughs> like, good luck. <laughs> Good luck getting your stuff back. Well, Sorry. I don't know what the rule is in Bismarck Mandan, I guess, but... I think it's probably pretty similar. I can't imagine your cops are too worried about the stolen goods. My favorite part of this pawn shop, it was right next to the place I would get sandwiches from every day. Oh, um, Butcher Block? Yeah. yeah. Oh, so First Nash? Yeah. Yep, yep. <laughs> and so, I and they would always get, like, cars brought in. Yep, yep. And, like, they would just be the weirdest fucking... Like, one time there was, like, an Escalade, and then one time there was, like... A Sebring with no doors. <laughs> it's like you bought this. Yeah, right. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, we don't we don't really get into too many cars at our pawn shop. So, yeah, I feel like that would be like such an interesting job. But at the same point, it's just like I don't know if I could do it. Yeah, it takes a certain soul for sure. Like, and the thing is, like, you have to have a really thick backbone. And if you don't have one, you're gonna develop one, or you're gonna quit. So, it uh, you definitely it, it's not for the faint of heart. For sure. Being a thief or working in a pawn shop? Pawn shop. Oh, okay. well, I thought you were going to say when they used to come You could be anybody to be a thief, dude. There's such bitch thieves, dude. Like, like you ca- like you call them out on shit, and they're like, the stories people tell. Like, for instance, somebody, uh, this lady came in two days ago, uh, and she came in with some old tools or whatever, and um, our new guy was entering them in, and then, like, a message popped up saying that this stuff's already in our inventory. So that means, like, this lady or whoever she was with stole them before and then came back and tried to sell them back to us and so we're like yeah lady these are ours like <laughs> like no. why not go to a different pawn shop yeah and, and it's like and she must have been fencing them for somebody you know and so she's like so i've never i've never stolen a thing in my life and i'm like lie much like yeah. like everyone's stolen something in their life I'm no sure. one's no one's ever not stolen so it's like if you're gonna lie make it believable first off and then also she's like it's like we can walk down the police station right now, and my boss is like, "It's like we can call the police." Like, let's, yeah, let's call the police. She's like, "Well, no, no." Yeah, and she's and she's like, "Where'd you get this stuff from?" She's like, "I, I don't, I don't know, polar bear." <laughs> for like, I think Scott's his first name. I'm like, that's how you know someone's a piece of shit when they go by monikers like Polar Bear. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it was Polar Bear. Like, I want to know who Polar Bear is. Like for real. I'm sure your boyfriend that's really trying to turn his life around had all the good intentions yeah, of for stealing real. these. Yeah, it's just like uh, you guys. I mean, and that's the thing about thieves, man. Sometimes they're just so stupid. You know, like you think like if people are gonna be criminals, you'd at least be some. But like a lot of criminals are just dumb. Like. And they're and it's so funny to like catch people up in their stories because like the changes like fifty times. When you're just like it's like my uncle gave me this. You're like oh how or, and then the story changes like my cousin gave me this. Like oh I bought it for this or I was like oh I get, got it from this guy. You're like I didn't believe it the first time he said something. Uh, <laughs> I, I know you. You don't have a brother. <laughs> oh and also like people like this. You guys have to just like differ from the stories people tell you like like a dude that is obviously homeless and like doesn't have anything to his name rolls in like a two thousand dollar bike and you go where'd you get that bike and they go my uncle bought it for me it's like do you know what my uncle bought me for christmas nothing Cause my, cause <laughs> he doesn't uncle, even have my phone number cause, yeah, for real like yeah yeah clearly. uncles don't buy their nephews anything anymore like who the fuck is this yeah exactly like it's like it's like i guarantee you your uncle didn't buy you two. and also if your uncle's buying you a two thousand dollar bike how about he buys you a month's rent <laughs> <laughs> like what the fuck i mean he talking? did indirectly that's what yeah, the bike's like, going for <laughs> i was like yeah it's like what do you like no i don't believe that your uncle bought you a two thousand dollar bike but i'll give you a hundred bucks for it yeah. <laughs> and i'll sell it for a thousand so what about the clientele that like comes into like purchase stuff like i mean where they're like oh, you can tell they're not necessarily a criminal but no yeah so there's decent? people like maybe they'll just shop the pawn shop too which is fine you know but like there's some people that shop at the pawn shop that are like so like they like they want to buy everything for nothing you know like you'll have like you have like 50 dollars on something so i'll be like I'll, I'll give you 20 bucks for it you're like are you 
retarded like what (laughs) you know how things work like i'm not gonna give you more than half off the item like it's like what are you talking like 60 percent it's it's like like, in life like it's like you can like give reasonable offers like if you give me an actual reasonable offer even if i can't do it i sometimes will just do it (laughs) because i'm like that was that was the best offer i was given all day visit david at work next time we're in fargo Mm -hmm. make out like bandits yeah well i mean like it's just like if you actually like are legit with an offer like if if you give me like an item that i can give you 20 bucks for and you're like uh i want 25 for it i'll be like sure but most people you have a 20 dollar item they'll be like i want 150 dollars for this <laughs> and you're like they retail for 60 like what, <laughs> like what are you talking about yeah like, do you see that entire shelf full yeah. of them over there yeah exactly and that's what i tell people like, how many it, fucking like, drills are 100 even? bucks a pop i'm like DeWalt yeah i have a drills. whole <laughs> shelf full of them so i'll give you a 10 you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it's like it you you definitely get a good uh you can you can sniff sketchiness from a mile away after you work at a pawn shop for a while you know how long have you been at the old the old pea shop so i've been working pawn shops since for like eight years now Jesus, I pretty much. Uh, so my first job out of high school is a grocery store, and then well, I worked at the grocery store from seventeen to like nineteen, and then after that, I went right to pawn shop. You you run in the joint? No, I would never want to run a pawn shop. <laughs> I have to manage on Sundays, and I hate that, dude. <laughs> yeah, like imagine like the most conflict that happens at a pawn shop, and then having to be the one to deal with it. Sundays are a rough day. It's like where's Dave be. just fast asleep? And in we're the like back. they were the only pawn shop open in Fargo on Sundays. Well, so. everything gets stolen on Saturday nights. Yeah. Well, it's it's just like like people like come in with things that I've never even seen before. Like like someone had like oh like a concrete sp- he called it a concrete sprayer. I have no idea what the fuck that it means. It was just a hose and like <laughs> it was like a big piece of machinery. I was like, what is it? He's like <laughs> he's like it's like is this is like you don't know what it is. I'm like. No, I don't know what the <laughs> fuck this is. Why the fuck would I know what this is? Like people are like, you were gonna pawn shop. You don't know what this is. Like, I don't know everything about everything. Like, the, do you know everything about everything? Like, like no, dude, I don't. I'm 28. You know, like <laughs> you don't I haven't, I haven't, I haven't worked construction for 13 years. Dude. Like, <laughs> no, I don't know what the fuck this thing is. Like. He fully like, expects it's like yeah a lot of people come in here looking for concrete and sometimes, and sometimes I, when i'd be like hey, i'm gonna be like hey man so like i make good choices in life so i don't have to sell my boss's concrete sprayer <laughs> <laughs> so i don't know why you're getting mad at me <laughs> like like i'm not the one that just stole this thing and is now trying to harass me for money like it well, I don't know how <laughs> we talked about this a couple episodes. Like people, so look back in the day, like if you had a soccer ball, you'd write your name on it and your phone number. Yeah. Yep. Now it's like you don't want anyone to have your phone yeah, number. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah, like back in the, like your when you were a kid and you had possessions, and your parents would be like, "Yeah, your we're, your, your baseball mitt, like, yeah, yeah, like, your soccer ball, a lot of number. like your football, a lot of sports stuff." Like. And like someone will call you because they found your baseball mitt. Like, don't ever fucking call this number again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I Stay away ch- from my kid. <laughs> I'm not gonna change my number. Hey, I found your kid's baseball net. <laughs> it, it was connected to him in my basement. Yeah, so I was watching your kid play baseball, and then I noticed he left his mid in the dugout. So I grabbed it and sniffed it for a while. <laughs> well, then I thought I'd give you a call because it's the right thing to do. <laughs> Are you gonna ask him if he's ever gotten something with somebody's name and phone number on it? I, I feel like oh it, no some people will, like mark their stuff like they'll put the names on it and we'll just simply be like what's your name like let me see your id and it'll be it'll be like greg jenkins and it'll, it'll be it'll be like and it'll be like jacob like anderson you'll be like so who is this you're like and like the look of the confusion on their face you're like yeah it's not you're like yeah. <laughs> probably because they're like shit they do have a name and number yeah. on there i didn't even know uh, I, didn't and, expect, I didn't expect dave to know how to read and then <laughs> another thing that people do what's funny is uh like if brand new items we want receipts for you know because you know like yeah. obviously they're stolen you know and like this one kid uh for like a week uh he's bringing in stuff he was stealing and we're like yeah dude no we need receipts for this shit and like because it's like obviously brand new and so then he would like go home and like drag it on the ground like make like sp- like marks on it and bring it back and i'm like you think i'm fucking stupid dude? like i know i know what wear on a tool looks like like yeah, this like, looks like you took a pocket knife to it and drug it across like you didn't use this dude this he goes a- out in the parking lot and you clearly see him just roll oh, it over people do that car. too people like people bring him brand new things in the package you know and it'll be like no i need receipts for this and they'll go out in the car take it out and then bring it back in and they'll be like 
it's good now, right? Like, that's not how this works, dude. <laughs> or they even say it to us. I'll be like, so if I go out in the car and I take it out of the package, I'll bring it and I bring it. It's like, no. Like, <laughs> you think this is like some loophole Still shit? Stolen. Like, yeah. yeah like, it's like, it's like, it's like, I know you did it. Like, do some loophole. <laughs> Like he's like, oh, it's 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 out of the package now. You gotta take it. It's like, no, dude. Like they think they're so smart. <laughs> You're like, no, dude. If you were smart, you wouldn't be stealing. Yeah, stuff. you wouldn't be here right <laughs> yeah, now. Right, if yeah, if you were smart, you, if you were actually a really intelligent dude, you wouldn't even know this place existed. You would you would drive past this place every day and be like, I wonder what that place is. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, honestly, I didn't go into like a pawn shop until I was like probably like 22. Well, but there's no, I mean, there's not really a re like I never went into pawn shops as a kid. Like, I just like kind of saw them on TV and I was like, that looks kind of cool. So I applied and then I got there. I was like, oh, wait, <laughs> this is not <laughs> at are all. You, are you I, a pawn stars guy or are you a hardcore pawn? Well, guy? dude, a pawn stars isn't even closely like yeah, even I heard remotely it's close super to pawn scripted shop. yeah it's like because like in pawn stars they'll be like they'll like negotiate by the hundreds yeah. like in a real pawn store like every five dollars makes a huge difference yeah. you know because you got technically double it you know so if you get someone ten dollars you have to double that price like 20 bucks you know so yeah. it's like when they're like i'll give you 300 400 five you're like no dude well, that's not how you negotiate like at all it's like if you want 50 bucks but you hardcore pawn is like it's almost like I know some of it's scripted, but it, it might as well not be. You yeah. know what I mean? Like the stuff they script is like real, like shit that happens. Like people freaking out and like, like, like getting mad at you for not or giving them money. It's for like stuff. some guy just took a shit in the parking lot. It's like I don't know if you could script that. True TV does a lot of weird things, but I don't yeah, know yeah. I mean, and that we've we've seen shit in the parking lot. So <laughs> it happens. I yeah, did um, one time. Um, we were walking out to our cars after we closed with the shot, and I saw, like, a pawn ticket that was all folded up, and we were like, just going to throw it away. And I was like, oh, wait, there's weed in here. It's like someone folded up a pawn ticket and put weed in there. And I, and I was like, well, I kind of feel bad making this go to waste. So I was like, but I'm not going to smoke it, so I just sold it to someone. <laughs> <laughs> so it hit me. I was like, hey, do you have a 20 bag? I'm like, I do. <laughs> Always Hopefully be you don't die from fentanyl. But. <laughs> It's a slippery slope. If someone's got to do it, I'm glad it's me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the last time I was even in a pawn shop was with you. I think we were really, we were balls deep in our garage sale slash thrift store phase. And we're like, we we're so hungry to find some crazy shit. We went to the pawn shop. We went to the two in Mandan. Yeah. Which is There's two in Mandan. I yeah. yeah. And I mean, yeah, we, it was a quick loop and it was like, yeah, what are we doing here? Let's get the fuck out of here. I, I used to go by, so there's like by the indoor golf place, there's a pawn shop by the airport. And I swear they, have, they always have so many golf clubs. I swear people go play golf and they're like, I fucking hate this game. And they yeah. go to the pawn shop and sell their clubs. Yeah. We barely take clubs. Like they gotta be nice clubs for us to take yeah. them. Cause otherwise, yeah, it's just like you get everyone's grandfather's clubs and oh, no one yeah. wants them and they just get, you know, so yeah, just go to any thrift store. There's like dozens of golf clubs there that are clearly just some old dudes you were found in a shed after he died mm -hmm. yeah well that's why i hate thrift stores people like thrifting i'm like dude the thrift store is everything we passed on yeah I, yeah the, you we, know like it's everything we, that i saw at the it's a rough and i life. said no i don't want that and they donate it so i'm like like i really feel like i'm gonna get ill when i go into a thrift store i'm I, like I there's mean, so much bacteria we've occasionally found st good stuff in thrift stores but it's pretty few and far between yeah yeah, but they started picking up on it, so everything that we liked because we knew it was good is right up our alley. Like a lot of, look at it in the fucking closet. I mean, there's yeah. all sorts of shit. A lot of it's from garage sales, but a few times we found it in the thrift store, and then that one thrift store, uh, it's like an old Adrian Peterson Vikings jersey that mm -hmm. there's millions of those out there because he's the fucking MVP and everybody loved him and it's local. <laughs> It's like forty five dollars, and like one of the numbers is just peeling off. It's like, come on, like, <laughs> it's like, that jersey brand new was fifty five dollars, yeah. <laughs> yeah. and it's not old enough to be vintage. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, there's probably a real golden age of like thrift stores before they knew what they had. Before like, fucking Macklemore came, I know what I got. Song. Yeah, like jewelry. Like, there's probably a big amount of time where it, like thrift stores couldn't tell the difference between fake and real gold. You know, because like. I mean, there was a time where like thrift stores used people that worked at thrift stores would come through and be like, 
you know, this is all the real gold that I stole <laughs> from, <laughs> from I got I fired, at the but I did get forty four hundred dollars. They're at the pawn shop. Gold. Yeah. So they're like pawning yeah, off the stuff they stole. Yeah, I learned how to store. tell if it was fake or not. And so I just take all the real stuff and take it here. I'm like, okay, I guess. You're a terrible human being. Yeah, right. <laughs> but here's your not, 50 not bucks. Any, not any day. worse than <laughs> everyone else that comes through here. Yeah. So it's an honest criminal. Uh let's move over to the radio. You got a radio spot out in the Fargo area. Oh, I've, I've been doing radio for years. Yeah. Okay, but was is this venture with Blaze a newer one? Yeah, this is a newer one. Okay. Yeah, I got high one night and I was just <laughs> like, <laughs> like, because like the radio station always begs me to come back. You know, like they're always like, we want, we need you to, we want you to come back, we want you to come back. I'm like, I don't want to do it. And then like just one day I got really high and I was like, I kind of miss it. <laughs> and also like. Yeah, and so like, I just I was like, yeah, I'll do. It. I I talked to Blaze. I was like, do you want to do it? And like, we there's a morning slot. Like, we could do the morning show. And he was like, sure. And I was like, oh fuck, I wish you wouldn't have said sure. <laughs> Damn it. Yeah. So now I have a morning show from four thirty a.m. to five thirty. Well, it's, it's seven a.m. to nine a.m. So that's actually a pretty fucking solid. Yeah, slot. I always see I mean, you guys posting a, about it, and I'm like, I just woke up. Yeah, that's a pretty good slot because that's what everyone's fucking driving to work. That's mm -hmm. the only time I listen to the radio. Yeah, and you know, like, and then the radio station we're on is like a, it's like a, it's a public station. Give yourself a plug. We got some Fargo Moorhead listeners. Uh, radio Free Fargo Moorhead, ninety five point nine FM, the Davy and Rascal Show, <laughs> <laughs> seven a.m. to nine a.m. Uh, it's uh, on it's, Tuesdays. It's, on Tuesdays, yeah. It's labeled because uh, I used to have a my last show on there was a reggae show, and they I think they thought that I was doing another reggae show. <laughs> <laughs> so huge misunderstanding so so on on the description of the show it says uh top notch reggae and i had to change it every time sometimes they don't even change it <laughs> like when i when i release the episode so how much is it of like playing music and how much to be honest, it gets talk? less and less music every single time like it's like i think last time we played four songs <laughs> <laughs> and two none hours? of them reggae yeah <laughs> yeah all all just me and blaze talking yeah. yeah i mean honestly that's like I hit a point where it's like I like AM radio more than I like FM mm -hmm. just because I like people. Well, it's like, like it's like this, like a podcast. Essentially, yeah. it's just a, we can just you do a podcast. podcast it? Um, well, like, can I go we, back we, and listen? We can. Yeah, we. Ha it's all recorded, so you can actually go listen to the episodes on their website. Okay, on the website. Yep. So I mean, it's essentially just like a podcast, just actually it, live. <laughs> you should just get like the RSS feed and just plug it into iTunes and Spotify. Yeah, I could do that. I know, like the it's a. Uh, uh the radio stations like they're like we don't want you making money because we don't make money <laughs> <laughs> i don't so, know if you know this about radio it's been dying yeah, for, yeah like, it's, we're, we don't have sponsors so yeah well like um they get underwritings you know so like there are some businesses in fargo that pay for the yeah. underwriting stuff we actually got an actual like sponsor for our show somehow uh uh, I can't. I don't. I don't even know who it is. <laughs> Blaze. It's, Blaze. It's, uh, it's real the, quality it, stuff. It's uh, the pawn shop. It's, I it's, work it's, it's, uh, Blaze. It's um, Access Clinicals. I think they're called. Yeah, they do like uh, like human studies. You know, like you can. Oh, oh yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, like we, I think at Fargo, where you like get paid like five hundred bucks to like take some medicine and like stay in a room for a little weekend. Yeah. Have you ever done it? No, I don't. I don't want to do that. I've I already got enough medications, dude. Like, yeah. <laughs> Like, part of me wants to, but, like, part of me doesn't want what to. What happens if you take a medication, then they're like, oh, by the way, you have AIDS now. And you're like, what? <laughs> what, Damn dude? It. You can't do that shit, bro. What the fuck? Well, we, had, we had to give you AIDS first. You signed so the waiver, dude. Like, you signed it. Literally, right at the top of the first sentence is, you will get AIDS. We are not you signed it immediately. We're not responsible for giving you AIDS. But this is ex you are exactly responsible for giving me AIDS. <laughs> if anyone's responsible. It's exactly you. It's no one else but you. But well, it's heard, technically your fault because you signed the waiver. I'm like, ah, you're right. I heard uh, like half the people get like a placebo, mm -hmm. and so it's like, what if you just kept lucking out and just got the placebo? Oh, dude, that's like why I would just, I'd be like, I'd be like, hey man, like I get, I do the radio show, like just give me the placebo, <laughs> like yeah. come on, just do it. You'd just get an in with them and be like, oh, I can go it. over at open mic if I want to. <laughs> give me the placebo, <laughs> <laughs> or you just take whatever experimental drug they have and then go do open mic. 
just be like, "What's Dave on this week?" <laughs> <laughs> or um, or just like foaming from the mouth, or like, or like tongue it and spit it out, and then just like take an edible. <laughs> 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 like those guys having a really weird effect of this, <laughs> this diabetes medication. <laughs> <laughs> no one's reacting like Dave. He's just licking a window. In his He's room. having a really good time. <laughs> there was this guy that uh, other podcasts I listened to, and I don't know his name. His name's like Yoshi, and he would do them in LA, but it would be like three weeks at a time and he would get paid like $12,000. Nice. But like sometimes he get sounds like, like AIDS territory. It, yeah. It's like, uh, how was the, how was the human trial? Oh, they sold me. <laughs> I'm in Qatar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm a sex slave in Abu Dhabi now. Uh, they took my arms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah so they have them back after the, the trial. <laughs> Yeah, so apparently he's just been doing... He does, like, four of these trials a year, and that's all he does for work. It's not bad. Not a bad living. It's... I mean, honestly, like, how much are the trials? Like, a couple of weeks or something like yeah, that? Yeah, you spend, like, three weeks in, like, a... What equates to, like, a hotel. Okay, so, like, what, four of those? So, like, was that three months of the year? Yeah. You know? like, that's not... That ain't, Until I mean, your arms how, are gone and you're <laughs> sex slave in Qatar. Yeah, yeah I mean, one kidney. Like, it's like as long as they don't die or I mean like the thing is like you probably like you the reality if you're doing that many you're probably gonna have some adverse effects down the road oh, you know, yes. from all the fucking medications you were taking. I used to have hair mixing and <laughs> testicles. Yeah, <laughs> I used to have a big set of balls. Now I have nothing. <laughs> don't even have a dick anymore. I just it's smooth down there. <laughs> Too much diabetes medication, dude. I don't even have diabetes. <laughs> Somehow the diabetes medication gave me diabetes. I've never seen anything like it. <laughs> yeah, they said oopsie <laughs> when I told them. <laughs> uh, dude, there, well, well, there was a thing going around that people, someone was taking like AIDS blood and putting it into an orange. <laughs> and so people were cutting it open. You'd see like blood inside of it. And I like for a while there, I didn't eat oranges. <laughs> <laughs> and funny. then it turns out it was only happening in like... <laughs> deep africa congo or something yeah and it's like oh so the orange, bit, of, bit of an oversight the oranges i would buy from the superstore the in bismarck north dakota probably there's just an african i sell them outside <laughs> not from you yeah. <laughs> not, nope, not nope, buying nope, those nope. oranges i'm not racist but <laughs> i think those oranges are full of aids <laughs> <laughs> or uh, there was uh, i watched like you, you ever watch those true crime Thing where it's like a guy with a deep voice and they do like recreations of it and they always scare the shit out of me this guy was like someone was getting into their car and he cut their uh achilles tendon Ugh. and so for like a solid six months the truck that you're driving now i would open the door and then like jump into the truck <laughs> It's like, I don't know, I don't know if a guy's no, dude, fucking I up like, yeah it's, i, I was did, so dude. paranoid as a kid there's definitely like um i watched uh gremlins in fifth grade and because uh, we had the bookmobile, do you guys have a bookmobile in here? Yeah, until the bookmobile, yeah. right? And you could you could check out a DVD or like yeah or something. And we didn't even have a DVD player. We just had my computer, our desktop computer, and you could play a DVD on there. So I would watch DVDs on my computer, and uh, I watched Gremlins. And I was only in fifth grade. And at the end of Gremlins, they say like, if you're ever in your house uh, at dark and you hear like your washing machine explode or make weird <laughs> noises, there's probably a gremlin in your house. And I lived in the basement, the room across from the laundry room, and the laundry machine would just make the weirdest noises all the time. I was like, I'd be in my bed, it's like, oh god, oh god, oh god, the fucking idiot. fucking taken away by gremlins. I mean, at least that's kind of like, at least like, kind of scary. I am scared of the Grinch. The Grinch jim carrey version <laughs> you're scared of him yeah <laughs> dude, Fuck, i hate that guy dude one time uh, at the pawn shop uh there before i started work or uh, when i started working there told me a story about earlier like a couple of years earlier they had like a they have a candy machine you know like put a corn in there some m&ms and shit like that and uh they said some a couple of people came in and said that they uh they owned the candy this is before they had their own so they said like they said that they owned the company with the candy machine they were going to take it and like clean it and service it and then they never came back with it so stole it yeah, stole. They just took it <laughs> i was like dude you guys got fucking grinched <laughs> dude that's the fucking dude they pulled the oldest that, dr seuss trick on you in the book there's like i'm gonna take this candy machine and i'm gonna go make it better i'm gonna clean it and i, I gave that guy my car too 
<laughs> this is like, dude, that's that's classic Grinch right there. What? Uh, just real quick about the radio. What do you and Blaze even talk about? I don't know, man. <laughs> it's, uh, Asian slaves sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah, I don't the know. Good, the good quality kind. Yeah, like, like it's, it's so crazy because, like, I also took this job on the radio again because I was like, I kind of want to get kicked off the radio. I want to make it so they don't ever ask me to do a show again, you know, because it is kind of annoying every time I separate myself from the station. And like, please, please come back. So now maybe, maybe, but, like, not, like, just blatantly, I don't want to, like, get kicked off the radio, but, like, I want to do, like, is slowly to where they their patience runs out and they're like all right you're done like stop so like literally like um a couple of weeks ago like last month we had a show where we talked about having asian slaves chinese slaves for like 20 minutes like not even like any real point to it just like being stupid talking about it and then like 20 minutes after we played a song that we accidentally said shit in and I get a text from the radio manager like, you can't play musical swearing in it. I'm like, dude, we just talked about <laughs> slaving Chinese people for like an hour. Like, your priorities are so fucked. <laughs> like, don't swear. I don't know Chinese you, slavery, that's fine, though. Unless you're like Mormon or like a Quaker, everyone doesn't care if you say the word shit. Yeah, right. It's like the F word meant something different when I was a kid. Yeah. Yeah, like it's. Like, swearing is fine. Yeah. <laughs> like, and also, I went to this wedding um, in Nashville last weekend, and uh, it was, like, the rehearsal dinner with, the, like, the groom and the bride and all their friends and family. And uh, and you. Yeah, and then the groomsmen. I mean, John Kennedy, another Kennedy, my, my good friend, he's in New York right now. Uh, we were, were best men, and then we were walking in, and, like, we have, we, we joke about the most horrible things, you know, like, as most you know comedians yep. do and like say the worst things and i walked in there and i looked at all of the bride and groom's fam friends and family and i was like it was then i realized like oh my god you guys i have a potty mouth <laughs> like i swear a lot and say horrible things all the time because like it was like it was like oh dude i can't do that right now like it's a small room like I can't say all the things I usually say because they're going to be so appalled. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm going to be a visual and audible nuisance. At Just this didn't program. talk the whole time. And then I, and, but then I made the mistake of taking a hundred milligram edible <laughs> <laughs> before the rehearsal dinner. And then also drank some really strong rum. So like I was definitely an audible and visual nuisance <laughs> during <laughs> the rehearsal dinner. <laughs> the two things you're not supposed to do, you did. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was like it wasn't until I got there. I was like, oh well, shit, dude. That's this classic like the week or the day before the wedding when you have rehearsal dinner. You're like, I'm not gonna drink that much, and then like that day comes and you're like, I've never drank before. And yeah, you just slam as many beers as you can. Yeah, yeah being like, over uh, for weddings. Uh, Tradition, yeah, unlike any other. Yeah, we were at a steakhouse. Like, uh, groom's mom said she was paying for all the food, and we we're like, "Dude, I we flew all the way out here. I'm getting a fucking steak, right? I'm getting a fucking ribeye." So I bought a ribeye, and then like, but the drinks where we were supposed to pay for the drinks, but I was like, I was just praying that like some dude like played hero and was like, "I'm gonna take all the drink tabs," and like no one said anything. So I was like, "Fuck!" So like, I had like like thirty bucks in drinks for me, and my lady, and uh, then like. And I put my cash down on the table for the drinks. And then, like, I was walking to, like, uh, to my friends. This old guy's like, do you have a drink tab? And I was like, I, he's, the way he said it, I thought he was, like, going to yell at me for, like, like, I thought he was like, are you trying to walk out on your drink tab so the groom's mom has to pay for it? I was like, no, I put the cash over there. He's like, give it to me. Like he's like the money. He's like, no, the tab. I was like, oh, so, yeah, and he paid, for, yeah. The, yeah, he paid for all the drinks. I was like, fuck. Thank God. That was, was like the nicest, meanest way. Yeah, like, I thought he was going to yell at me. I was like, no, dude, I swear to God, I paid it, dude. Like, I'm not yeah. I'm not being a piece of shit, you know? He's like, give it to me. I'm like, all right. I mean, my dick or... <laughs> yeah, so you, you want me to meet you out back? Yeah, right. <laughs> give you a blowjob? Okay. Yeah, so it was a pretty, pretty good dinner. Uh, ribeye and good rum and, yeah. Sounds pretty good. 100 milligram edibles. Like, yeah. I was pretty full from the edible, but I, yeah, right. I managed to get the steak down. Just one gummy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, dude. And my, my lady was just this ragging on me for how high I was trying to cut a steak. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, <laughs> just cutting into your She's like laughing at me. And I'm like, way. I'm like, shut up. <laughs> shut up. You try doing this. You want to cut it for me? You cut it for me. You have two spoons. And you're yeah. just like, <laughs> but in my defense, there was a lot of like tendons and, you know, like, 
like real like hard shit to cut through so like after she's like saw what i was kind of like okay that makes more sense i was like i'm not fucking stupid i know how to cut a steak i'm <laughs> 28 years old like this is just a little this is not the right element right now yeah. i'm out of my element yeah <laughs> what should we talk about you do you like rum because you're jamaican i am um, i'm not jamaican technically my my dad is okay but i i like rum because it's the best liquor because it's it's just got a good flavor to it like tequila like tequila like it it doesn't got a good flavor to it you know like it gets you fucked up it's a stimulant that's the other thing you know like vodka i hate the taste of vodka vodka tastes like weird to me uh gin fucking disgusting gin tastes like a carpet yeah yeah it's exactly like Gin just like licking yeah. the carpet you know yeah. and then whiskey bourbon like it's just not my thing you know like the wheats you know it makes me feel bloated and shit so the rum just it does it for me you know and then like the actual jamaican rum is real good you know it has that fun because of the limestone that they distill it with yeah um but yeah i'm a rum dog for sure did you enjoy the rum i gave you earlier oh dude all that rum was delicious i gave him some rum straight out of the still oh yeah dude he gave it right off the teat <laughs> straight from the teat just yeah. the heads and like guys oh, colorblind now <laughs> yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah little did i tell you that's actually the heads you're gonna be blind <laughs> Uh, either that or the parking lot weed. I'm already fucking blind, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I was never really a, a rum guy until it got introduced to Scott and George yeah. started working in the distillery, and then it's like that's mm -hmm. usually my if I drink hard alcohol, it's usually rum. Now. Yeah, I mean, like I just like vodka just has a weird taste in me. Like it has a weird, like even like a weird mouth feel to me. Vodka's you know? just so neutral, starchy, that it's, you know. It's, you can mix vodka with like damn near anything. Yeah, and, that, and that's like uh, I'll, that's I'll the that, allure yeah. of vodka. But like even like a vodka heavy shot like makes it just gross to me. Like a, like a lemon drop if they use too much vodka in it, I'm just like this is like a lemon bomb at this point, dude. Like <laughs> I I also found out that I have like the world's worst taste for booze. Like mm. we did a whiskey tasting down at the distillery, and yeah. like I brought some guys that like really knew whiskey. And like we like rated them all, and my favorite was far and away the worst whiskey. Yeah, and everyone was like, "This sucked," and I was like, seven out of ten." Yeah, not dude. bad. There's these guys that used—I don't know if they still do it anymore. They used to have this thing called the Booze, Brews, and Reviews podcast in Fargo, and they would take comedians on, and you would you do three shows, like each show is like an hour, uh, but you would sample three different types of booze or beer uh, in each episode. So by the time you're done filming three episodes, you would just be hammed, right? Yeah. And I got like I like blacked out, <laughs> <laughs> like browned out pretty bad. And like apparently, um, I don't know if you guys ever met Tim Jones, but he's this black comedian from Fargo. He's from Alabama, like this just incredibly black Southern dude. <laughs> like like he's like fifty, and like uh, somehow like me and him have just become good friends. You know, cause, uh, like like no one can roast him like i can for obvious reasons you know yeah so like, we'd be, <laughs> <laughs> we've just come to get really good friends but apparently he was in the episode with me i invited him over and my roommate at the time uh was like watching tv and i invited him over to watch the new dinosaur show on apple tv <laughs> <laughs> and like uh we, we apparently watched it for like 10 minutes and then i went downstairs and i passed out <laughs> in my bed and my roommate had to give tim ride home <laughs> <laughs> i woke up at like like five hours later i was like what the fuck i was like yeah you dropped tim off on me <laughs> you gotta start watching dinosaurs then you went to bed <laughs> it's like all right well cool i fucking we're, got him were the dinosaurs cool <laughs> like great prank yeah right pretty average night if you ask yeah. me yeah i was yeah i was like yeah tim come on let's go watch dinos and like tim's obviously it has to be drunk enough to be like hell yeah, yeah that <laughs> sounds good that sounds like the move <laughs> Well, speaking of booze, let's go get some drinks. What do you say, fellas? Yeah, yeah that sounds show good. Show Dave a good time here in Bismarck. Last time I showed you a pretty good time. I was fucking yeah. wasted. But it was very funny because you were buying us drinks the whole time. But then the last bar, you're like, I ran out of money. You guys. <laughs> <laughs> like, you guys, I've been buying you drinks all night. Have I not? We're like, yes, Jordan, you have. <laughs> like, well, I ran out of money. So <laughs> can you do this one? We're like, yeah, Jordan, we can buy you a drink. <laughs> You're my guest, you know. I like to show my guests a good time, be a good host. That's Absolutely, we appreciate it. Well, we appreciate you coming on. No, yeah, I had a lot of podcast. fun. You're a, you're a natural with the mic, with your radio career, and uh, uh, doing good things in comedy. So keep it up, man. Thank uh, you, guys. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'll happy. To, I'll be back. Happy to be fellow comedians with you here in North Absolutely. Dakota. Absolutely, you guys the, are good. The worst 
market. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, if I had to pick yeah, like Wyoming, every, Alaska, literally. then North Dakota. Every person I, I told them that I was coming here, like, oh, do they have a good comedy scene? They're like, they don't have one. It, <laughs> you're looking at like 50% of it. Yeah. 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 Well, they don't have one, yeah. which is bad. Yeah. <laughs> I can't come up with a new joke if I even tried right now. <laughs> writer's block. I got some I got some writer's block right now, too. But I, I got a lot of jokes, just none of them are fucking any good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, like, the thing is, like, you could, uh, like a joke you don't think is that good, you can make good if you had enough mics a week, you know? Yeah. Then you could work it out until it was good, but if you only have, like, three mics a month, that's impossible. Yeah. You know? That's enough for me. I can barely keep up, but... <laughs> Matt, what can our listeners do to yeah. stay in tune with No Brains, No Headache? Make sure to follow us on social media at NBNH Podcast, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and YouTube. Dave, where can our listeners find you at? So you can find me on Twitter at David Standle, my first and last name, at Instagram at David Standle, uh, first and last name, uh, at uh, Discord, uh, Harry Balls 65 <laughs> 420 uh, uh, White Supremacy 39. Uh, <laughs> Uh, no, but um, yeah, you can also catch me pretty much any week at the cellar in Fargo. I'm there all the time on the weekends too. Uh, yeah, just uh, hit up my social media. You'll see what I'm doing. I post on there. So. Do you have any planned shows right now? You know, um, pretty much my season is concluded for the summer, okay. and now uh, fall's gonna pick up. Fall's usually a heavy time, fall winter. So I'll have a, I'll have another season lined up here soon. Perfect. Cool. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on, man. We had a good time. Hell yeah, I had a good time too. Episode 167 of No Brains, No Headache Podcast. Up next. This is a freestyle at the top of the dome. Here we go. And I do it again, 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 again. I do it only once. Again, 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 again. I do 